Good morning, everybody. My name is Carla, and you've reached my floss tube channel, Carla Being Crafty, where I talk about mostly cross stitch, but also other crafts that I enjoy, and a little bit of life thrown in. Um, today is Sunday, November 26th. It is the end of a four-day weekend here uh, for me, because um, Thursday was Thanksgiving here in the U.S. So I, uh, I'm sad that it's the last day of the four-day weekend, but I have certainly enjoyed having uh, four days off. Um, Julie, stitching at the cabin, you'd be happy to know I didn't get sick. Um, I didn't pull anything. Um, I have had bad luck with four-day weekends <laughs> in the past. Um, being really excited, having lots of plans, and then uh, fate steps in. But this week, um, this, this 40 weekend actually was pretty good. So, sorry, I'm cleaning up my desk here a little bit. It's making me crazy. Um, so I hope that uh, any of you who celebrated Thanksgiving had a really nice one. Um, I did. I did a bunch of cooking on Thursday and I actually posted three extra videos um, of my uh, Thanksgiving counter cooking adventures. I was gonna kind of spread it out and then when I started doing like the turkey and the sides and everything, um, you know, because you can't just like do a video and be done. You have to like do the first part and then do the cooking and then come back and you know, and I was alternating things and finally I ended up putting it all together. So I have um, a pumpkin snack cake, which I would say watch that even if you're not interested in Thanksgiving, if you're just interested in like fall flavor snap, snack cake, because that recipe I think is a really good one. Um, oh, here comes Baggy. Here comes Baggy. And um, several people have said that this is the Baggy show that I I am uh, just uh, <laughs> just the presenter on the baggy show. Um, so the snack cake um, I think is for everybody. <laughs> and, and then I did a separate video on cranberry orange relish because that's kind of like start to finish. I was able to do it. And then the longer video is my turkey and dressing and sides. Come on. Oh. Here he is. Here's the star. The star of the show. Bagheera. The big black cat. Um, so yeah, I mean, and then out. And then after I made all the food, um, I got on Zoom with um, my brother and sister-in-law and the kids and my best friend was there and Bonnie, uh, Bonnie Lerner, who is a viewer of the channel, who happened to meet my family because they ended up moving to where she kind of lives. So that was like a happy, happy coincidence, I guess. And um, they were all there together and I was there via Zoom. Um, I was very, um, I felt very remote. Uh, it was hard because, you know, there's so many people and they're just like yapping and, and they were trying to at first set up the camera so that it would kind of like pan around and I get to see everybody. But then two of the kids were being kids and for whatever reason didn't want to be on film. Um, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> sometimes they, <laughs> sometimes they're, they're kids. Um, so yeah, so it became kind of static and I basically spent the whole dinner watching my friend Tracy, <laughs> but that's fine. Um, uh, you know, so it was a little bit, uh, chaotic and I, I felt a little bit removed from it, but, um, but it was still really nice to be able to be with everybody. Um, so, and I'm glad that I did the videos. I have to say that, um, it was a good plan for me to kind of do those videos because I think if I hadn't done them, um, I may have like, kind of crapped out on myself and like, you know, it's not worth it, you know, to, to make the effort. And I'm really glad I did make the effort to have the foods that I wanted to have because then I've had them all weekend. I've been eating, you know, the leftover stuffing and, and turkey and cranberry and whatever I've had, you know, I tend to have a weird, like, like, oh, I'm going to have a meal of green beans. <laughs> you know, I did that last night, but it was, a, it's a good feeling to have those leftovers. Um, and I'm glad that I didn't let myself 
not make the food because I just didn't feel like it or, you know, it was too much trouble or whatever. And doing the videos for you guys kind of pushed me to go ahead and do the cooking. Um, so that was good. And um, so that was Thursday. Um, I was also very proud of myself because I was, you know, zooming with them and they're three hours ahead of me. They started eating around between 5.30 and 6. And so I had to have my stuff ready 2.30-ish. Now everything was supposed to be at 2. They were supposed to start at 5 and I was supposed to start at 2. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to make it. And they're like, we're not going to make it either. So we ended up starting a little bit later. But the fact that it was so early for me, which was nice because it's like I didn't have to worry about being starving before eating. You know, I had I had a piece of the snack cake when it came out in the morning. And then, um, you know, I was ready for my big uh, midday meal. Um, but by the time, you know, we said goodbye for the evening, you know, it was still way early for me. It was only like 4.35 o'clock. Um, so I was, and I was so proud of myself. I got up, I put all of the food away and I did all of the dishes. So my kitchen actually did not look like a cyclone had gone through it when I was done. And I have a little pile of dishes that I have to do sometime today. You know, I have to empty the dishwasher and do a little pile of, of my weekend dishes, but I did everything and, and I was really proud of myself about that. And then Friday, um, have you ever had one of those days where it's just like, you can't like wake up? So Friday was a little bit like that. I had intentions of doing a lot of stuff, but um, I was just kind of nappy. I got up early and then I took a mid-morning nap and then I was reading and then I took another nap, but I finally was up um, by like afternoon, like one o'clock I was like, okay, I'm awake now. Um, and I came and I cleaned out and reorganized my um, crafting area um which fantastic right that's a fantastic thing to do um so i got that all done it took a toll on my body i gotta say but i got it done and then yesterday um i worked on my little golden books like almost all day i would say i started fairly early-ish in the morning like 9 30 10 o'clock i started working on them and i finished probably around five where I went and actually went and got comfortable and actually worked a little bit on something that I could do over there. Um, so I got a lot of stuff done. I still have a lot to do before they can be ready to be sent out, but I will show you what I did later in the video. Um, but I did get a lot done. So that was, um, that was another thing to be proud of. So today after my video, um, my body is sore. I've had sciatica problems for the last couple weeks and um, doing all the cleaning and the sitting in this chair for a long time doing crafting has not helped. So my, my back and my knees are a little bit tweaky today. Um, but once I finish, uh, the stage that I'm at with books, um, I can re put everything away cause I had to pull some stuff out yesterday of my nice clean area to work on and stuff, but then I can put everything kind of back together, um, at least for the week. And then, um, relax and then I'm not sure for my uh if the zoom if I'm going to stitch or if I'm going to work on the golden books I still haven't decided yet it might depend on just what my back wants to do because it, it may be done sitting in this crafting chair for for a while um but yeah so it was it's been a great weekend um like I said I'm sad that it's it's gonna be over today um I could I could do with a, like a 10 day weekend <laughs> Um, but it, uh, you know, it's been relaxing and productive, which is a nice combo. Um, okay. So I did mention we have the Zoom today at three o'clock. Um, so I would love to see everybody there, whoever can join. Um, and yeah. So before I get into like the crafting stuff to show you this week, I do have something I have to show you that is just amazing and i got this in the mail friday i want to say so my nephew hudson who is nine years old um made a book he wrote a book he uh 
I think he did maybe the illustrations first and then put the words to it, I'm not sure, but he created a book. And then his mom for his birthday actually got it turned into an actual book. Does that make sense? Um, I don't know, do they have any kind of publishing? I guess not. I guess they just turn it into a hardcover book for you. Yeah. So, um, and then they sent it to me. And I got a signed copy of the book. So it's called The Stories of Bubbles the Bunny, now with Alan the Alien and Roy the Robot by Hudson Abrams. So this is book hardcover, see? Please ignore my, my nails. <laughs> They're destroyed right at the moment. And I'm not gonna read you the whole book because it's, it's um, extensive. But it's all full of these wonderful hand drawings and a wonderful story. And it's very, very, very cool. And I was very excited to get it. So I just wanted to share that with you. I did ask permission if it was okay for me to show you guys this book. Um unfortunately i don't think that you can get it yet i don't think it's out for a mass publication at this time but you know who knows what will happen in the future so maybe 10 years from now you'll be in your local bookstore and you will see a book by hudson abrams and you will know that i showed you a book by hudson abrams first so this is a very exciting thing to get Okay, so now on to the crafting stuff this week. Um, I don't have very many books to show you. Um, it was, I mean, considering it was Thanksgiving and all the other stuff I was doing, um, I did, I worked on three craft stitchy things, but I also worked on my latch hook, which this is like so old, it's not even funny. Like, I don't even know when I started this. I don't know if I started this. 20 years ago or 30 years ago or maybe even 40 years ago I mean I really don't know um it is filthy and I'm like really wanting to get it finished so that I can wash it um, I mean I can't go in the washing machine or anything but I really need to like soak it and I don't want to do that until it's done but um let me see if I can hold up the whole thing so it's Okay, hopefully you saw that because I can't tell. But what I worked on, you can see all I have left is this this much, and I did this this week. So I'm gonna try and work on this a little bit each week to get it done because it's pretty. And I've been working on it for 30 or 40 years, but it really needs to be done. Um, what? I mean, I'm trying to think. Latchik was really popular, like, in the late 70s. So, yeah, that's probably when I started it, was, like, late 70s, early 80s, like, when I was probably early high school, I'm going to say. Maybe a little bit after that, because I did, I did another big wall hanging that I don't even know what happened to it. But anyway, so I worked on that this week, and it's it's fun. I mean, latchik has always been fun. It is, like I said, a little bit gross because it's really really filthy, and um, it's I mean it's like dusty filthy, right? It's it's not like like nasty it's just dusty because it's been sitting there um and in fact when I pulled it out this year I pulled it out because I was talking to Julie uh stitching at the cabin and she had like just bought a, a latch hook or she said something about latch hook and I'm like oh my god I have a latch hook that's been sitting here well I moved in in 2018 so that's already what 18 19 20 five years that has been sitting in the corner and getting dust. So there was like a layer of dust. All the underneath part, because it was all folded up, all the underneath part was fine, but that top had that layer of dust and it's just, 
it doesn't want to come off. I did rinse it, like I tried to rinse it, but it really just needs to soak. I need to put some mild detergent, you know, like laundry detergent, mild, in a sink with hot water and soak it and get all that dirt out and then let it dry maybe in the sun or something on the weekend. Um, but, you know, that's the other hard thing is I don't have an outside, so if I hang it over the rail, I have to like be here. I have to, you know, make sure that it doesn't get taken or anything like that. Um, but yeah, so I really want to get it finished so that I can give it a nice bath. And then I have to figure out how to finish it. And am I going to put it on the floor? If I put it on the floor, Baggy's going to lay on it. So then it'll be full of black cat hair. But I don't have any wall space. So I think I'm going to put it on the floor. Um, I don't know. We'll just have to see. We'll have to see. I'm very, you know, obviously I'm not like, you know, it's been sitting there for 40 years. I'm not that desperate about it. But anyway, so I worked on that a couple nights this week. And then I have three whips to show you. So not a ton. Um, but, you know, work is work. All right. So I worked on my pumpkin trio, which is a little ornament by Mill Hill. I thought it was funny. I was watching um, Kansas City Girl in the Colorado World this week, and she showed this as a finish. Like, she had just done it. And she's like, oh, and they're so easy. You know, it took me, like, a day and a half. And I'm thinking, like, are, a day and a half, like, you worked on it all day? Or a day and a half, like, you worked on it for, like, three hours and you're done? Because, I mean, they're not going to take me forever, but it's way more than three hours. So, I am almost done with the stitching. I think the Little White Pumpkin has some more, uh, one more color stitching. And then, um, there's just some assorted random stitching. And then I can do the beading on it. And there's a little frog uh, treasure that goes with it. And I found it kind of in my bed yesterday. So when I was working on it, it must have fallen out of my little package. And I threw it over here somewhere and now I don't know where it is. So I'm gonna have to search for it. <laughs> but yeah, there's a little, a little glass frog bead that goes right there. So I'm going to have to find my frog. it's probably in here somewhere I hope I hope it's not too hard to find because I don't want to tear everything apart to find the frog but I may have to I think I probably tossed it into this basket which means it probably went down to the bottom which means yeah I'm gonna have to search for it because I do crap like that you know I was not in the mood to do something with it, so I just tossed it somewhere. Okay, um, I worked on Sampler Osha. Um, I did this, I think, Thanksgiving evening after, and I was tired, so I just did a little bit. Um, yeah, I just did a little. <laughs> Um, I finished, I think I was halfway through the queue. So I finished the QRS and I started this little motif right here. So I think I did like one or two strands of floss that night. So not a ton of work, but you know, it's Thanksgiving, I was tired. Oh, did I also tell you guys that like when I uh, when I was saying that I had reorganized my area, part of that reorganization was is I bought a little shelf unit, like a teeny skinny shelf unit, um, to help me organize, and so I had to put that together. So my hands and wrists are a little sore because you know that was a lot of like screwing, <laughs> screwing of screws into it. Um, but I did put it together and um, 
it does help because one of my problems was is I have these like really pretty floral like they're like shoe boxes but I mean they're boxes of different sizes they actually nested right and there's like six of them and they hold a lot of my crafting stuff which is great but the problem is is that how my organizational issue I guess um, <clears throat> and please if you have suggestions for me I'm remembering that I'm in a teeny tiny space um, is trying to balance putting stuff away and having it organized and neat with ease of access because it's one thing to get everything all put away in boxes and drawers and whatever but then if you can't get at the boxes and you can't open the drawers because there's stuff in front of them or whatever the issue is it doesn't it, it either means that I don't end up using the supplies I have because I can't get at them or when I get at them it just creates a big mess and you know so every time I, I need stuff it just creates more of a mess and you know it's a never it's a vicious cycle so the thing with this little um, shelf unit is because so I have these these colorful floral boxes but I can never get at them so if I want like I have one of them is full of like duct tape and tapes and stuff like that and because it's heavy it would be towards the bottom and it's like if I needed that stuff I'd have to pull everything out and it's such a big pain so with this little shelf unit I was able to put several of the boxes on the shelf unit but because it's a shelf unit, I can pull them out individually. And so that I think is helpful. Um, I had stuff stacked next to it, which did have to get pulled out yesterday when I was working on the little golden books because the paper that I needed is at the bottom and there was stuff on top of it. So I have a little bit of a mess right now, but um, it's not that bad and I will be able to put it all back together this afternoon. Not quite. So, yeah, so that's my, always my issue is like, how do I organize stuff, but it's still accessible? I want it away, but able to be got at. I mean, it doesn't have to be away like I can't see it. I don't mind looking at the organized stuff, but yeah. Um, someday, dream, you know, win the lottery, live in a big, slightly bigger place, whatever. You know, one of those box things that what are they called? I don't know. Those big units where it open, trifolds out and it will hold everything you've ever owned. That would be fantastic. But, you know, in the meantime, I'm trying to be creative with my uh, storage and um, organizational solutions. Okay. So the last thing that I worked on as far as stitching was... Uh, my Bella Filipina Phoenix Queen. This is my Misha Berach piece, which is my piece for healing. Um, personal healing, healing of specific people. This was started in honor of uh, Jolie's mom, um, who is dealing with cancer, breast cancer treatment right now. Um, and healing for the world, really, which is something that needs to be happening right now, I think. Um, so, that was a good week to pull out Phoenix Queen. Oops. And let's see, what did I do? Um, I actually started, and you can barely see it but I started her hand or her arm and she's wearing a good glove up to here. So, um, I, I do think that I'm going to, well, and I did, I started doing one over one stitching on the skin, which I don't think you that right there is one over one, but that is normal. Cause that's her glove. And then I did more of the pinky ready stitches up there. And these, sections that you see that aren't stitched that are kind of in the middle that is 100 percent beads so this is a heavily beaded piece so i'm gonna have to balance like when when do i start doing the beading like um you know do i need to wait till the end which sometimes is a good thing to do but sometimes i can't wait so okay 
And I think that's it. I also feel like I'm forgetting something that I stitched on during the week, but I don't know what. So if I did stitch on something else, then you'll see it again when I pull it out at a different time. Okay, but then, I, as I said, I had a lot of work uh, yesterday on my little golden book. So I'm excited to kind of share that with you as well. Um, now, as you guys know, um, I do, or I have done in the past, floss makeup videos every year. Um, basically the eight nights of Hanukkah, I will head online, light the candles with you guys, maybe give you a little bit of Hanukkah trivia. And, um, last year I gave away um, nine. So it was one for each night. And then I also wanted to give one away to Jen Marsh. She sent me a fantastic Hanukkah package. So that was so fun. It was so nice for me to have something to open, um, during Hanukkah. Um, so <laughs> I've been working on these off and on all year. Of course I'm down to the deadline and I don't know if I'm going to get them done before Hanukkah. Hopefully I'll get them done before the end of the year and get them out to everybody. Um, but you know, if I don't, I don't. And, um, you know, if I do, that'll be great. Um, so, and then as I was doing stuff, I also like prepped some other ones because I was thinking like, if I want to do giveaways this year or next year, or even maybe sell some of them. So I don't know. Um, so anyway, so where I'm at is I have 20 prepped covers. Actually one of them's for me, so I shouldn't say that, but I will. 20 prepped. One, one of them is definitely going to stay with me. Um, nine of them are for Flossnicka gifts. Three of, the, of them are for friends gifts. Um, and then, um, so yesterday I got four finished. When I say finished, they're not finished at all. Finished meaning I pulled all of the papers and I sewed in the signatures um, with the buttons inside and I'll show you in a minute. So I got four of them at that stage. There's, in my opinion, two more stages. One is the decorating the pages stage where I add ribbons and trim and, and fancy cutting and everything to all of the edges of the, pa of the signature pages. Um, and then the final stage is just filling it chock full of fun little tchotchkes, little cards and, and things. Um, Again, these books are to do whatever you want with them. Um, I like to make sure there's lots of little hidden spaces to write stuff or to tuck things in or, you know, to keep treasures or to keep notes or, you know, you can use them as anything. You can use them to write your thoughts. You could use them to write grocery lists. You could use them as autograph journals. You could use them just to tuck in mementos, you know, anything that you want. Um, they're just fun to look at, right? Um, so those final two, like sort of decorating phases are the most fun for me, but I have to get to that point first. I um, mean, if I'm doing one book at a time, you know, I kind of do it all, but since I'm trying to get volume done, I have to kind of do it in stages. Okay, so I have four that are in that finished, ready for the two decorating phases. I have... Um, Five more, so the, the, I'm, I'm focusing on the 12 that I want to get out before the end of the year. The nine plus ones and the three friends ones. So that's 12. So of those 12, I have four that are finished or at the point where I can decorate them. And then I have five where the papers have all been pulled and put together, but they're not sewn in yet. And then I have three that still have to be pulled, which is what I'm going to be doing today. It's definitely pulling the papers for those three. Um, I don't know if I'm going to sew in any today. That's a little bit hard on my, my back and stuff, but we'll see. And then maybe I'll pull papers for more, depending on how much time I have. So let me show you the, the four that um, are kind of more at the ready for ready for decoration stage. So I have Sleeping Beauty. This is for one of my friends at work. And she wanted like sort of a pink and blue theme. Now this still needs to be glued. So there's certain things that aren't, there's certain things that aren't finished. And as you can see, everything's very sort of plain, 
you know, oops, my edges, they're all square and an interesting, and there's no, um, there's no trim on any of the things. So, but it's all, you know, sewn. And it's got its buttons on the side. So, yeah, so that one is ready to go. So, I did glue, you know, the specialty, like, pockets and stuff, those are glued. But other pockets that, that are more part of the construction are not. Um, then this one is also for, for my friend at work. stuff in here to, I don't know why I have extra stuff in here I think I just shoved it in here <clears throat> she is a yellow orange person so. now there's one um folded thing specialty thing that I was making that I stopped or I'm not making for these books I, I did it for this one because actually I, I had pulled this stuff a long time ago and that's this one that does this um, which looks fantastic but it's way harder to do it takes a lot more time and um, I don't think that it it doesn't have the bang for the buck as far as the time factor involved um, the one thing that I am doing for every page or for every book is this thing because this is the one that everybody seems to flip out on. And this one is way really easy to do. So it's like my little maze. Okay. Which is, you know, if you are a journaler or want to have tucked in notes, that's perfect for that. Okay. This. Peanuts one is um, Meg, which is Books Books in the Moon, I think is her Floss Tube channel or her Instagram. So she wanted Peanuts and she wanted, she said she's like Space Dinosaurs and Rockets, which is not something that I have a lot of papers for, but I have a lot of stickers and stuff, so those will go in here. But she wanted the peanuts, so I just kind of went with colors and things that that fit. I did put a Star Wars page in it. And then the last one that I got the signature sewed in is the Alice in Wonderland. This is for Lee. Uh, six strings and other things. This book is like fantastic. This book is really old too. You can just tell. Um, this one was published. What does it say? Nineteen seventy-seven. <clears throat> and she likes like the darker blues and greens so I tried to go with that blues, greens, and reds I think what I might do is when I get um, some more of them done then I'll do like a you know, like an overhead flip through of one or two of them so you guys can kind of see really what's in them. They're all pretty much like the same as far as the structure and like, I have to do it that way. I had, I have a prototype um, that I created. Um, this is my prototype. It is and you can see with this one, just 
how like chock full of stuff I like them to be with stickers everywhere and um, trims and actually as I as I kept doing them um, I put more like fabric trims and stuff on a lot of the pages so this one is actually late as far as that goes but you know, with laces and stuff like that um, but I really like to fill them fill all my little pockets with all kinds of little things um, <clears throat> so I lost my train oh so as I was saying um, I do have like a prototype so like I always do like this like the first signature has this folded page, then a regular page, then a book page, then a, then a this, then a this, you know, and it, so they're in that way, the structure is all the same because otherwise I have to, I had to like, ha, had to automate it. I, I don't know if that's the right word, but to a certain extent to be able to do them. I mean, even if I wasn't doing, um, doing, a bunch at a time I still would need to do that otherwise I would just be sort of lost so having a prototype having a design of how you know how the pages go together um, works for me um, one thing I am adding to these books is um, I made this when I first started doing paper crafting, I made this little booklet. Um, it's like an endless, it's like an endless little journal. And I really like it. And this one's a little bit elaborate and I don't think I'm making them as elaborate for these because it's, it's a whole, you know, thing in and of itself. But I did want to put one of these in all of them. So, um, I have three that are further along and the rest at the moment only have the one signature um, put in. But So they open like that and they're gonna have a two writing cards there. They have a pocket here, which I'll probably put something in. And then there's a little signature and then it keeps going and folds that way. And then there's gonna be a little tablet there, like that. So I don't know what, you know, how I'm gonna finish these. Um, if I'm gonna put more, I don't know that I'm gonna put more signatures in because of course I sew them and that takes a while. So, um, but I might, I might, I don't know. Um, we'll have to see. But um, I worked on those because I could sew in the signatures on these. And as I said, I only got the one signature on each of these sewn in. So, you know, there's nothing until you get to the signature that's sewn in. Um, but those are a little bit, you know, I was able to work on that, you know, a slightly more comfortable position. So that's what I worked on yesterday, which, you know, as I said, I worked on it a lot and, um, um, but I feel like I, I got a good chunk done. So um, I just need to pull the papers for um, the three for sure. Uh, possibly more today that I will pull. And then I can kind of put all the papers away um, and then sew the signatures. And then I can get to the decorating part, which is like the so fun part for me. It's not a quick part because that's where the creative really has to come in. And, and I have to go through all my ribbons and tapes and, you know, I have glitter tapes and I have washi tapes and I have all kinds of things. And it's like, you know, that is the creativity part. And then filling it with a ton of stuff is is fun for me as well and then I'll be ready to send so we'll see how many of them I can get done um, Hanukkah is a little bit early this year um, I think it starts on the 8th if I'm not mistaken um, I am planning on doing 
um, Flossnica again. Um, I found a spot in my apartment that I have not uh, used before. Um, and I think I'm gonna do it down my little, my little hall, if you wanna call it that. Um, so again, this is a studio, right? Next to this cabinet, there's like the closet and there's a teeny little hallway dressing area, if you wanna call it that, that goes into the bathroom. So, um, but there's a counter at the end of it, which is piled with stuff. So that's gonna have to get cleaned off. Um, I think I'm gonna do it in there. And I actually got a tripod, a tall tripod, so that I can have a light and uh, not quite that'll work. So I'm excited about trying it in that different area. Um, so yeah, I don't think that they're gonna be, my flossnickers are gonna be as elaborate as they were last year because again, last year I had uh, patterns to show you guys. Um, I purchased all those realist kits, but I'm not gonna do a big purchase this year for myself because I'm trying to, to not do stuff like that. Um, if anybody wants to send me anything, Veronica, for me to um, unwrap on, on camera, I will be happy to do that. Um, but uh, yeah, so, you know, that's coming up fairly quickly. Um, I think I'm still gonna be able to do uh, a Flosnica every night though. We'll see, uh, I'll try. First year I did it, the second year it was a little bit difficult for me to do it and I just did like a sort of a vlog style um, and I did one one video vlog style of the week and then last year again I did a pretty elaborate one. So, um, you know, we'll see. We'll see if it's going to be a full on, you know, thing this year or if it's just going to be uh, doing, lighting the candles and talking a little bit. Um, but. Uh, those, those are basically my plans. And then, as I said, I want to work on the rug, you know, work on my stitches and then work on my books. So we'll see. Today I'm very like focused on the books. Um, that's uh, kind of on the top of my mind. Um, when it gets to be like three o'clock, it's still early. It's only nine o'clock. Um, I got up, I got up early this morning. I wasn't sleeping well. My leg was hurting me, my hip and my, my knee. Um, if it gets to be three o'clock and I just can't sit up anymore or can't sit in this chair anymore, then I'll probably go and, uh, work on my, on my, uh, county canvas. But if I have the energy and stuff to keep sitting here, then I might be working on little Goldbrooks during the Zoom. So we will see. Um, but yeah, I think that that's it. Um, I hope you guys had a wonderful holiday weekend if it was a holiday weekend for you if not um I hope you had a great week anyway <laughs> and are looking forward to the week coming up I mean we're getting into the holiday season where it's just I know everybody's like crazy busy um and it can be really wonderful but it can also be a little bit stressful so you know try and try and temper that stress and and try and just enjoy and you know if things are too stressful, back off from them. I mean, I try and tell myself that all the time and I know it doesn't always work, I know. But, you know, if the stuff that you're doing is not bringing you any kind of joy at all and it's just stressful, um, like holiday parties or, or making stuff, you know, it's like nobody's gonna be upset if you go and you buy a tray of vegetables instead of cutting them all up yourself, you know? Um, and anybody who would, isn't being your friend, you know? So anyway, keep, uh, keep, uh, yourself at the top of your, of your gift list, of your, of your taking care of list. And, um, until I see you again, please remember to be content, be kind, and be crafty. This is Carla. Bye-bye.